Now, back in 1979, a sports training program was launched to help athletes realize their full potential, especially when competing in the international stage. Now, a lawmaker seeks to revive Project Gintong Alay, which trained a number of legendary sports icons like track and field superstar Lija de Vega and Elma Muros, Olympian Isidro Del Prado. We have swimming champs Eric Buhayan and yours truly. It's uh, former executive director Michael Keon who joins us live right now to tell us more about this good morning mr keon thank you so much for being with us and it's been a while <laughs> good morning christine i'm happy to see you after all these years I am, I am so happy it just brings back so you know a lot of wonderful memories that i had with gintong ala and of course you know brings back the memories of philippine sports but what are your thoughts because of that memories that that keeps live that keeps uh, living on in, in the minds of so many people what are your thoughts on the proposal to actually revive the Gintong Alley project. Well, of course, I'm gratified by that. Um, but just let me say that I, I'm happy with the present situation in Philippine sports from the perspective of the hosting of these games. This is being done pretty well. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 what we have to understand is that the host has the hometown advantage. So I, I believe that there's a strong possibility that we can win the overall championship. It's what happens after that. It's, it's the, the basic training of our athletes that has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, Thailand has staged the game six times, and each time they've been the overall champion. Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Vietnam have all staged the games, and they've been the overall champion. The Philippines was the overall champion in 2005. Mm -hmm. So you have the hometown advantage. So we should win the overall championship. It's what happens after that. It's what happens between the games. Because prior to this games in 2017, we, we brought home 24 gold. Sixth right? place. Sixth place. Yes. And uh, we were like walking through memory lane and we just discovered in 1983, you mentioned that having it in Singapore, we Filipinos play second. And I believe that that's the best performance of the Philippines overseas, competing in an overseas Southeast Asian Games. So that was the momentum of Gintong Alay. So what exactly is Gintong Alay? Gintong Alay was created through letter of instruction number 955 on October 31, 1979. Originally, it was simply a track program. It later expanded into field. And when we did well, President Marcos at that time decided to make it the umbrella sports training program of the Philippines. So we took over... Uh, from the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, and we trained all the sports for the SEA Games, Asian Games, and Olympics. But, but what was it? I mean, it was more than just a program. Grassroot, well, I mean, what was it about Gintong Alay that not only, um, you know, you were able to develop athletes in track and field, but in other sports as well? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a former athlete. Uh, I, I would like to believe that my difference was that I always talk to the athletes. I always go directly mm -hmm. to the athletes and listen to them. Um, what we did, for example, in, in Baguio City, where we assembled all the track and field athletes, we took care of our athletes on a daily basis. We ensured that they had the right food, that they had the right equipment, that they had the, uh, the right... We had masajistas. Mm -hmm. We made sure that our athletes had supplements. And we took care of all the aspects that makes a great athlete. And we also looked for talent on the grassroots level. All the time, we kept on looking for talent. We didn't get our athletes from overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, we always looked for local. And, and that, the, the Gintong Alay program cared about the athletes and cared about bringing up Filipino athletes. Because I've always believed that the Filipino athlete is just, is just as genetically capable as any other athlete perhaps with the problem of size, but then you have weight mm -hmm. categories mm -hmm. which compensate for that. And, and that is more evident now as we see these Filipino out, uh, athletes sprouting left and right from our pole vaulter. Yes. To our uh, weightlifter, Obiena, yes, right? Heidelin Diaz. Heidelin Diaz. And then you have Carlos Yulo. Exactly. Carlos Yulo's performance, by the way, could bring us the gold medal in the Olympics. We're one of the few countries left in the world that doesn't have an Olympic gold medal. 
You saw Carlos Yulo. I, he beat the Chinese, yes, he beat the Russians. Yes, yes. And then we had that other uh, boxing girl, the Nasty. girl who beat the Russians in Russia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what, Nasty Petesho, that, that's yes, right. Yes, that's where we can win, in gymnastics, in boxing that have weight categories. And, and height is not really uh, yes. an issue. It's, it's more advantage yes. to us because we're just so petite. Yes, uh, exactly. And, and going back to Gintong Ale, what would you say would be the advantages of having public sectors coordinating uh, and helping develop a lot of the athletes? Well, what we had during our time was President Marcos created the concept of godfathers. I, yeah, so we each had a sport godfather for had swimming. a godfather. Mm -hmm. and is that being done now? No. Well, it's a good idea. I'm, uh, President Duterte could identify certain businessmen, certain businesses that can become the sponsors of particular sports. So no one gets left behind because yes. what happens is sometimes we just focus on you know a few sports and then there's yes. like that you've never even touched or, or heard that there was this so and so up and coming athletes that gets left behind. Yes, and and I, I'd like to talk about track and field and swimming. Track and field and swimming are the blue ribbon events of any international sports competition. Track and field and swimming combined are 100 gold medals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, track and field and swimming have sort of lagged behind. And that's a pity. Why is that? <laughs> well, 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 from your well, assessment, well, what happened there? Well, for example, in, in track and field, I don't know why, but the Gintong Alley the former Gintong Alley training camp and teachers camp is no longer being used. Everyone knows that especially for middle and long distance running, high altitude is where you all mm -hmm. train. This is why the Kenyans and the Ethiopians are so good, because they're born in high altitude. To this day, the 400-meter record of Isidro Del Prado has not been broken. The 4 by 400 meters has not been broken. Lita uh, de Vega still has a record to this day. I, I, I believe that that's in the girls' division, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not in the open anymore. But Hector Begueo still has the Philippine 3,000-meter steeplechase record to this day. Why? Because they trained in Baguio. And I don't understand why Baguio is not being used. And, and we do have all the facilities there, yes. and, and that's yes. what we need to do. Okay, so moving forward, any plans? I mean, you, you are here, and people are talking about Gintong Alay. Any plans that uh, you would, uh, you know, get your feet wet a little bit and, and try to help out and share the knowledge that you've had? Well, you know, um, in 2005, I was appointed by the Philippine Sports Commission as a national training director of Team Philippines. And I help with the mm -hmm. training, with the overseas exposure. You know, at the present moment, I'm the mayor of Lawak City. So I'm, I'm dealing with, um, with governance. Mm -hmm. uh, I will try and build up sport in Lawak City as I built up in Ilocos Norte when I was governor. Sport has always been my passion. I still run until now. I've been running now for 50 years. Wow. So I try and keep fit. And I have an interest in sport, but at the present moment, I'm working on local governance. Whatever happens uh, with the national sports scene, I just hope that people uh, remember what Gintong Alay achieved and that they use the concepts of Gintong Alay and apply it in the present day sports situation. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for waking up so early and for being with us. Thank you. Thank Enjoy. you very much, Christine. Nice seeing you once again, uh, Mr. Thank Keon. you.